dolly, 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 and action. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the first ever Acting Masterclass podcast. This is a podcast where I talk about all of the issues concerning the acting industry, trying to become an actor, trying to be an actor, uh, the, the, the ups and downs. Listen, there's a lot to talk about. And I just want to be very clear off the top. Uh, it's called the Acting Masterclass Podcast. I'm not the, I'm not the master class teacher, okay? I'm going to talk to other people. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Amish, you're an Emmy nomination applicant. You're an Emmy nomination applicant. Yeah, but I'm also very humble. And I'm a lifelong student, and this is a podcast where I'm going to go talk to other actors. Now I have access to these other working actors, these big wigs. I'm going to go talk to them, and I'm going to get the tips, okay? I'm going to figure this out. Because, uh, listen, it's tough, okay? I'm not going to lie. The guy from Cosby is an accountant, okay? He was on Cosby. He doesn't have any money left. I was opening for uh, an actor who was on a major American TV show for like 10 years. And I'm opening for him, doing stand-up comedy. And he told me backstage that he basically had to start touring again because he got divorced and his uh, ex-wife took all the money. So he's like, I got to go back on the road. Listen, even over there, okay, it's very unstable. I remember the first um, acting job I got, I, uh, I, it was basically like this commercial, and I can't say which commercial, because these corporations, they're not technically allowed to do this, but if they find out you've been on someone else's commercial, like a, another corporation's, even if it was like five years ago, they'll be like, eh, I don't like that guy. Hmm, I don't like him. I just realized I don't like that guy. They, they do that. Legally, they can only do that for six months. But even if five years ago, that's why you're not supposed to put commercials on your resume. You're just supposed to take that. You're not supposed to include those. Because if you even five years ago were on one company's commercial, then the competing company is like, you know what? That person sucks. I just realized they suck because they legally can't be like, I don't want to put them on because they were on that. You know what I'm saying? So they'll just be like, mm, I don't like them. People in the room have told me. This is inside information that I've gotten. Anyway, uh, the point is, what I was going to say is, first acting uh, gig I ever booked, I was uh, silent on camera on a commercial, commercial, little booking, little book me a little commercial, commercial. During the break, I'm asking the lead actor, because she had done a bunch of stuff. And I was like, how do you book more work? And she said, <laughs> she started telling me about the secret you know the book she talked about the secret and she talked about crystal healing a little bit i don't know if you guys are into crystal healing anyway it scared the shit out of me all right i'm not gonna lie i um i was like it really it really scared me because it kind of reminded me of like when i was in india people would pe like anything that people don't have control over they would they would just say, oh, God is great. It, the secret is basically like a liberal, like a Western liberal version of God is great. God, say God is great five times. If you say God is great five times, God make everything great. Okay, don't worry. Scary if that's the advice. If that's all you got is basically like just listen to the, read the secret and then will the universe. She started telling me to will the universe. What does that mean? Listen, people believe in it. No disrespect. I love you. Look, I love you. If you believe in it, it's cool. If you believe, you got to believe whatever you got to believe. All right? We all have a thing. Some people's religion is a million years old. Some people's religion is like, you know, like this pop thing that started in Hollywood two years ago or 10 years ago. It's, it's scary. It's a tough industry. I remember uh, my buddy was on a show for like seven years. Okay? I'll tell you, I'm telling you this because this is really is the origin story of this podcast. This is why I have to do this podcast because I remember my buddy when we were in our 20s, he booked a big ting, you know what I'm saying? Like a seven year ting and, uh, and, and he got so cocky about it, right? And I didn't book anything. So I was trying to do, I was doing some stand up, I was doing sketch stuff, stand up and putting on shows, whatever. And every time I tell him about it, he would be like, oh, these, triv <laughs> these trivial matters are no concern to a working actor. Amish, I'm working. I don't put on shows. Shows are put on around me. Working. Hold on. That's my agent. 
Hello, another booking in Milan? But I don't like Milan at this time of the year. Well, send a script. If it's good, maybe I'll do it. I don't know, I'm working. I don't need to go to Milan if I don't feel like it. That show ended like three years ago. This guy's so sad now. He's broken. He's broken inside, okay? And that's why you got to do, I'm putting on this podcast because look, I got to figure out the tips. I'm going to talk to all these old, these actors who book more stuff and be like, hey, what is this, okay? Don't just tell me the secret. Let's, I need to know what you did. That's going to happen on this podcast, but also I'm going to make some contacts. And also, if you guys need a self-tape, you can come to my home studio, Kenwood Self-Tapes. We make the most gorgeous, beautiful self-tapes the most beautiful self-tapes in the game, and we charge the same as everyone else, okay? We're not even charging a premium. I mean, you're getting an Emmy nomination applicant here or a TIFF applicant filmmaker who is my business partner. He's my roommate. One of us is going to be reading with you and coaching you, and then the tapes are mm, mm, gorgeous, okay? I have some working actors coming in, getting their tapes done with us. They've booked work because they did a tape here, okay? And I'm very proud. Now, whenever she needs a self-tape, one of, the, one of our clients, whenever she needs a self-tape, her agent and her managers uh, and, her, and the casting director are like, hey, get those guys. Get those uh, Ken, 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 Kinder, Kinderwood. Or what's their names? Ken? Ken Woodstein? Get Ken Woodstein. Ken Woodstein self-tapes? Yeah, get, yeah, that guy. Go, get him. Kenneth Wahab Woodlhausen? Get that guy. Get that guy to do the self-tape. His self-tapes are gorgeous. They're talking about us. They don't know our names um, because we can't advertise like that the self-tape was from us. You know what I'm saying? They're just out there and they're gorgeous. They're so, our self-tapes are so beautiful that you could take a still sh shot from the tape. That could be your headshot, okay? We got some beautiful, beautiful uh, equipment. The equipment's fantastic. We got lights, we got a good sound thing because sound is huge, okay? Look at me. See this? See this? The camera, I'm like right in front of the camera, but you know what? The sound's gotta be tight, baby. And these are all things that we'll cover in the Acting Masterclass podcast. But right now, I'm going to cut to my first guest. It was going to be my friend Aisha Gonzalez, who I acted with on television. Um, but she got very sick today. She sent me, she looks like this right now, her words. And so I am going to put on uh, my Playmate on my hit Runaway Fringe play, The Win at Life Mega Expo. I'm going to put this guy on. We did it at the Toronto Fringe. We just got into the Ottawa and the Montreal Fringe Festivals. And we had a big meeting about it last night. We had a talk. Once the meeting was over, um, you know, this next guest, he had a few drinks, okay? And I, I, I had a little bit of pot. Sue me. It's legal. I got the paperwork. Got the paperwork right here, pal. Okay? I had a little pot. And he had a little bit to drink, but then we started recording a little bit of an acting masterclass podcast, a little interview. We did a little interview session, and I think we got some tight little bangers in there. I think there's some funny little bits in this, and I think there's even a good tip in here. Okay, so without any further ado, Morgan O'Shea. I like this uh, drug band character. Drunk Man Masterclass? Yeah, it's like an old idea I had, but it's been done like many times since. But uh, Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Just so like the parody of Masterclass uh, has been done like very well, like too many times. But I was yeah. looking over some old notes and like I wrote this bit like a while ago like uh, that I wanted to do a sketch about being like your I would be the Masterclass on how how to be a drunk. That's that's hilarious. Yeah. That sounds like a great. That sounds like there could be a training montage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can have like motivational just be like, music. It'd be yelling at like you could have like a group of like wannabe drunks like in a small classroom. That's great. First lesson is you smash like a pint glass across the window. It's like if you're not listening now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the double double fisting. There's yeah. like a yeah, yeah. double fisting 101. You got like a shot in this hand. You're like good, good, three. You know. Yeah. There's a lot of things to train people on. Basically, it'd be like tip well and like uh, keep to yourself in the corner. <laughs> That's your master class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just like scowl a bit, you know, yeah. so nobody wants to talk to you. Yeah. Make Basically, you the master class would be teaching you how the art of drinking alone. People, people don't drink alone enough. Like, wow. <laughs> you drink alone? 
Like you don't like going to like a like a pub at like like in the afternoon by yourself. And no, just drink nobody alone? does that. Ah uh, man, I got a lot of time on my hands. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, acting masterclass podcast. You just told me this uh, masterclass of being a drunk bit. Great little acting class of being a drunk bit. And then you, s- but in the middle of it, you said, "Oh, the whole masterclass thing's a bit hack." Really? I didn't say it was hack. I meant the parodies of it. Like it's, uh, there's been like a bunch of parodies of like. So this class. acting masterclass podcast, I shouldn't like play it up a bit. Oh, Act like a, I'm an actor, and I will teach you about the acting masterclass. Oh, shit, I forgot what podcast we're on. <laughs> <laughs> My co-host on Mama Voice. Uh. <laughs> I wasn't saying it was hack, like, just, like, that sketch. This is a podcast. Oh, okay. Here we I go. I mean, like, I've seen sketches about, like, the... Okay. <laughs> the actual... being a drunk or a master class? No, like, uh, yeah. I guess I can't talk my way out of this, huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny how, like, you can be so surly at times, but then sometimes you're like, oh, I guess I, no, 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 I don't want to offend you. Like, you really, <laughs> you really took that master class coming back. I, yeah. I, we have the recording of what it's you really said. It's called acting. Oh, <laughs> very good. I can master be, lesson, master class, take notes. I can be apologetic when need be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it, but it's acting. Acting. <laughs> There should be like an acting masterclass. It should be like how to act in real life so that you can just get shit. You know? <laughs> like someone who's like such a good actor that's like, acting in movies? No, no. But when a police pulls me over, I'll cry. <laughs> the, just the whole move is like a headshot. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. it didn't get me out of that ticket. I don't know. I guess I got to become a better actor. Better actor. <laughs> get some props like a banana. Remember we were talking about like <laughs> if someone got pulled over by a cop and like if, if, if a person got pulled over by a cop and they were drinking, the cop would be like, you're drinking, like pull over, whatever. But if you had a banana. Yeah. When you get pulled over and you just have an open banana. <laughs> you look very responsible. You look, I feel like the cop would pull you over and be like, banana. Oh, you know what, sir? We need more responsible people like you on the road. Just go, go, go uh, just have a nice day. Thank you. They're like, all I smell is potassium, not weed in here. <laughs> it, the banana's got a strong smell, too. Yeah. We're not advocating for that, Bro, though. Like, if you see me in real life, I'm like, I look like a piece of shit always. You can attest to this. Hey, hey, hey. He looks like a rock and roll. No, no, no. You know that. Like, I always look, look like, like garbage. like a James Dean rock and but roll. But for like, bad some boy. reason, when there's a camera, it's just like, it looks like I'm like so much less dead inside. I look beautiful on camera. I look very pretty. You look pretty in real life, though, too. Stop That's at. the difference, though. You better stop it right now. <laughs> you are. T- Come on. Look at that. Listen, you the amount of girlfriend this guy make, rock and roll. I, I think you got a real James Dean look, dude. Yeah, I feel like you can play. If we, this is acting master class. We do this regularly. Okay, we will be. Uh, what's your hit? They call this an acting. They, they, some acting coaches call it a hit. And it's like the part that you play. You, from the day I met you, I was like, this guy could be a French assassin. You could be like a hit man, but you get lit. You know what I mean? Like, But you, you <laughs> pick up girls, too. I had a meeting with this agent one time, and they're like, uh, we're like getting along, and they're like, oh, so what parts do you think you can play? And I was like, uh, like either a drug dealer or a drug user or some kind of villain. Yeah. And then they just cracked up. They're just like, oh my god. Ha! I'm glad I didn't have to say it. What? <laughs> Needless to say, they didn't get me much work. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Where they were just like, <laughs> we think you should go out for parts. Maybe people who are having addiction issues, something like that. <laughs> You're yeah. just like, and I'm like drunks. <laughs> I'm not even good at that because I uh, got sent out for this one audition one time for like a tough guy. Mm. Which would be like kind of my look, you know, like that's drug addict, drug dealer, whatever. You, you rock know? and roll, rock bro. and roll, tough guy. You think you could play that? And I didn't have money for like the bus to the audition place. Oh my god, keep talking. So I uh, I walked like an hour, yeah, to get to this place, and then uh, I was waiting in the lobby, and then they <laughs> came out, <laughs> and we're like, Morgan, you're next, and like I forget the line. It was just something like. Yo, you better watch what you're saying or something like that. Like something <laughs> That's the but best. like they're just like really wanted like this tough guy attitude that I just yeah. showed up and I was like, Hey, you better watch what you're saying and you know how they usually give you like a second take? They give you like like in an audition they're like, Oh well like how about you do it this way? Yeah. You know? You usually get two takes. 
I did it so bad they were basically like next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> they weren't okay, even. Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah. They weren't even like they did. They're like, oh, thank you. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like a sign. Like, like if you're good, they they tell you to stay and do a little bit. Yeah, well, even it, if you're like up. mediocre, they'll always be like, hey, here, like, how about you do it this way? You yeah. know, like they'll give you two takes and not in like an audition. But you thought they did a next. Yeah, Keep they it did rolling. a straight next. No, we're we're done with you. Like, I think that's your negative attitude a little bit. No, no, no. It was legit. They're just like, well, thanks. That's all we need. And then like they made me walk like an hour. Maybe you nailed again. it the first time, Morgan. Are you kidding me? Maybe you did it so good the first time that they said I. Oh yeah, that's why you saw me in that movie saying, "You better watch what you're saying." Oh yeah, and then you don't know that the director got into a fight. He fought, and he said, "I want this guy." And then they said no, and then they just changed it and they went with another guy. You think? Well, how can you listen? You got to be careful with the negativity, man. You're speculating. Maybe. There's maybe no. They, maybe they're like, "Yeah, nailed it," and then later they were like, "Yeah, it doesn't look right." <laughs> Let's be positive here, people, about these auditions. They give people a lot of anxiety. Oh yeah, I don't have uh, anxiety about it. You don't have any? Um, I remember one uh, one casting assistant was telling me that a girl came in, did her audition, like, you know, really good, whatever, and then started crying and saying, please, I need money. <laughs> <laughs> like, please, I need money. Um, I really need this, guys. Like, what can I do? And she started crying. That's amazing. I wish I had that much passion. For or acting. maybe she was just a really good actor. <laughs> how do you get parts? That'd be oh, amazing if I she, if she was auditioning for the role of like a crying, desperate woman and she just didn't make it. Like she just couldn't nail it. She's just like, oh, please help me. With, like, like they gave her a bunch of takes. She's like, sorry, like it's not going to work out. We're going a different choice. And she actually like starts bawling. And she's like, no, I want to do <laughs> so anything meta. for this. That's so meta. And they're like, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> and then even when they're shooting it on set, like she can't hit the nail apart, and then they're like, you know what, we're gonna get someone else. This is bullshit. Yeah, they have to Let's fire hire another actor. Forget they have it. to fire her. <laughs> they're like just so close to firing her, that, and then she goes, please, please. And the director's like, turn on the cameras. <laughs> like, let's go, roll it, roll sound on this. Let's go. And they just catch the most amazing. That's an Oscar. Yeah. The most incredible performance. Yeah, just get fired. That's a good character. That's why I'm a bad actor, because like, I always like emote the same, no matter the circumstance. That's why you're a rock and roll bad boy. You, nobody knows what you're thinking. Like, if I get fired, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> or if I get hired, I'm like, oh. Because in real life, you're like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, you, like, like there's a bad boyness to you. That's what I'm saying. That's your hit. <laughs> you're like that in real life. That's how you... We were saying, like, you have, like, a resting neg face, you know? And it can go a long way in Hollywood, I think. You just got to get the right first, like, bad boy part, and then after that, they'll keep on, you know? Yeah, you got, like, uh, if that happened, I, it's too late for me to get that, though. You know, you can't get a bad boy Hollywood role when you're mid-30s. You need to do that in the 20s when they think you can really die. You know, like, in the 30s, they're not going to give that role to someone because they're like, oh, this guy survived it. Like, no one's going to – everyone's going to be like, oh, man, uh, this guy no, doesn't have a chance to die. He's in his 30s. <laughs> yeah. How how sad, though, that, like, there's parts that we don't get to play anymore, you know? You don't care, right? Yeah. I don't really – I don't care that much either. I remember when I was younger, like, as I was aging out of parts, I was like, never get to be a – cool dude on the like teenage dude fall in love with the girl in teen yeah. high school can't do that part yeah you know? but you know i played a cop on degrassi newer opportunities arise like you can play a pedophile now no no, no 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 <laughs> i'm going to be daddy brother i'm already a dad on tv and it it works really well we got a call from a lawyer in new york saying i wanted to tip my agent told me she's like like some uh, lawyer in new york was like uh, they got off the phone, and then he called back, and he was like, hey, do you represent Amish Patel? Well, we watch him on Dino Dana all the He is incredible. We're looking for a project for him. He's just so good. Anyway, hire me. That's amazing. Okay? We're doing the Win at Life Mega Expo this summer. I can't wait. I was a great actor in that, huh? Actually, I'll say this about our Morgan O'Shea. He is an actor looking for work, and uh, after one of the plays, we saw our friend uh, Ryan at a comedy show. Shout out to the Ryan Long Toronto, great stuff. 
And anyway, he, Ryan Long, who is a big director, he casts people, whatever, he came up to both of us and he said, hey, I've been hearing a lot about the Win at Life Mega Expo. I heard it's incredible. And then he does this. He turns to Morgan and he says, I heard you were actually incredible in it. You. He said it like that. I was standing right beside him. But he said, play's going great. And then he's turned to Morgan for an extra. You had the, you had the really intense parts. See how I just very naturally dropped in a little. Yeah. That's pretty good master class. That's a good master class. That's eh? a good master class. <laughs> I think people learn stuff on this episode. 